Hello everybody, Kirk here with Space Pickle Designs. Today I have a simple necklace tutorial for you using the GGC Treasure Bag in Autumn Showcase and mine was in the Sunrise colorway. So if you'd like to see how I made this beautiful, simple necklace, then just keep on watching. All right, so the supplies you'll need from your GGC Treasure Bag is going to be the chain that comes in your box, one of the pear-shaped crystal pendants, um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve pearls. You're gonna need all six of your elongated crystals. You're gonna need four crystals of your choice out of the mix. I'm I got the crystals that match my pendant. We got four bead caps, bead cones here. I pulled eight um, little teeny bead caps from my stash and one of the toggle clasps. I am also going to use some jump rings here that I made to match my metal tone here, which is just the gold um, German style wire in 20 gauge. All right, so first thing that we wanna do is make this component. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's very elegant and pretty. And so I've already done a little bit of prep work here, but I'm gonna work from the spool again. And we're just doing simple loops. And what I like to do is feed a crystal on and then feed the bead cap on, just like that. Make a decent loop, size loop here. And make sure things are pretty sturdy. And I just move my crystal component down here. All right. And then we just make another simple loop. All right, and we just make sure that the loops are facing the same way. So if you need to adjust, do it like that. And so I've made two of those components with the bead cones, bead caps, whatever you wanna call them. I've made a simple loop with a pearl and this middle one is just going to be by itself with no bead cap. Very simple little design here. Right. Just making those simple loops. All right, now we make sure our loops are facing the same way. And I'll just show you just for uh, design sake here, just one of the pearls. Again, we're not using bead caps on these pearls. Some of the other pearls we will be. Push our pearl down. And we make sure our pearl is, our loops are hanging the same way. All right, and so this is what we have. All we have to do now is put our piece together. So we're gonna do alternating bead cap on a crystal with a pearl. And then that middle one, we are gonna do the naked crystal here. And then on the naked crystal, we do another pearl. And then finally, when we attach, we attach that last crystal piece with the bead cap. Now you have two identical components here. Very shiny, very sleek. Next up, we are going to make four of these components here. 
and I do like working with a small piece of wire instead of working off the spool when it comes to longer components like this. I feel like it's just a little bit trickier to um, get right off the spool and so I'm just going to make a loop on one side of this kind of like making a little head pin here and I'm going to feed a bead cap pearl crystal pearl and then a bead cap here and then what I do is just I hold the component down like this I bend it with my hand and with these, you got to watch the little teeny bead caps. They do kind of want to get away from you a little bit. So just put your thumb down there to hold them steady. And we turn a loop. Now this one is way off, but I like to keep my loops the same direction. So again, go ahead and make four of these and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we've done all the hard parts. All we have to do now is assemble the necklace. And so I have my pear-shaped um, crystal here. And I'm gonna put double jump rings two times. And these are just jump rings that I made myself. So I'm actually just gonna go through the component twice here. So you can see when I hold this up that we have two jump rings here. I like the look of that. Because I did make these jump rings myself, it makes it just a little more sturdy. And again, I'm going to do a double jump ring on those double jump rings. Okay. So what we want to do now, since we have now a sturdy base, upon which to build our necklace. We are going to take two of these pink crystal components. I'm gonna swing this guy open because it's easier to do it from this side of the component. I'm going to take both of those jump rings, swing those in there, close it up really good. This is where you wanna make sure you have no gaps It's gonna go to one side. We're gonna take the other component here. That's why I made some generous loops on these guys. And put it on that same double jump ring set. Make sure they are closed. This is what we're looking like so far. Looks beautiful. If you wanted to do another uh, design choice, you could put um, like a bronze, antique bronze jump ring right here to connect these two. But I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to connect jump ring to jump ring, or not jump ring to jump ring, but um, just component to component here. Again, I'm going to open it up. Sometimes it's hard to see which side is, especially if you get the loops pretty good. I got it pretty good on that one. Lucky, lucky. And so we want to make sure again that there are no gaps. All right, this is what we are looking like so far. I will bring it out just a little bit. And I'm loving that little pop of pink that we have. It's like a morganite color. In order to finish this little component and bring some of that pink up top, that's why we made two more of these guys. And we are just going to pop that on one side over here. Close it up really nice. Again, do the same thing on the other side. All right, we are almost done. So I'll bring you in again for this last little bit. This is the top two pieces of our necklace. I have measured out two pieces of chain for this side, two pieces of chain for this side. They're exactly the same length. I measured this component and I did want to make a 20 inch necklace. Feel free to use more chain if you want a longer necklace. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to save on jump rings down here. 
I'm going to attach my chain directly to the component on this side. All right. I love the mixture of gold and antique bronze. And so you want to make sure your, um, your chain is laying very silkily beside each other. And what you're going to do is take one of those jump rings and just make sure that they are not tangled up. This is how you want them to lay. You see they are looking directly side by side. And this is the side I want my toggle bar on. I'm going to just put that on there, close that up. You can actually do a double on that if you wanted to, and I may go back and do that um, at the end just to mirror that double jump ring kind of design. But we're going to go to the other side here. Again, open up that simple loop, feed on our pieces of chain here. Close it up. Make sure it's very well closed. Put your chains together. Make sure they are looking silky and smooth. And just put our chains on. And this is the side I'm going to attach the toggle ring. Make sure your jump ring is closed. And oh my gosh, you guys, we have such a beautiful necklace. Let's back it up, back it up, back it up. Look at this. Sorry, my mat is just gone through it. I think it's time for a new one. But this is the necklace. Look how romantic she looks. It is so classy, so simple, so easy and beginner friendly. Again, let me know what you thought about this necklace. You can do this design with a lot of different beads, but this bodes especially well with Gina's treasure bag. I think in both colors. This is the sunrise colorway, um, and so the sunset colorway will be a little bit different, obviously, and I'd love to see you create that if you have that bag. It sold out before I was uh, able to snag it up, unfortunately. If you'd like to see another tutorial for your treasure bag from Gina, I am wearing a bracelet that I made yesterday, so go ahead and tune into that tutorial as well. This is a little bit of a bead weaving tutorial, but super simple. Um, let me know what you thought about this necklace down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you're staying safe and well. Bye-bye.